be with Ida up in the loft thinking somebody was after him. He thought they were putting poison in the water. They said that there weren't any beds in Cornwall, not one bed in Cornwall that they could have put in. David needed his family around him. He didn't like it on his own. He felt safe at home. Home with me, he felt safe. Yeah, he was a lovely boy, a really, really lovely boy. He was an own birth, which he shouldn't have been, and he was born in the snow. It was pouring down the snow. And because um, I had two girls before, I just couldn't get in my head that I had a little boy. And I thought, he is mine, you know? It was, <laughs> it was really hard to believe I had a little boy. We are such a proud family because we had him. And as he, as he got older, he was so happy. He was always in hospital because he was a hooligan child. <laughs> he would run so fast as he could run and he wouldn't stop in time and he would fall down over the steps and he'd bang his head up against the wall, I'd be in hospital. David and Shane, his brother, they would spend hours on the beach. They, they did like the beach. Um, and they would go like down Charlestown, they'd jump off the arbor into the water and oh my god, I used to be terrified. You be careful and they would say, oh mother's off, here she go again, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> he was a boy I was proud of, very proud of. The first time we went to see him, he was like his old self, he was laughing, he was really talking, which he hadn't done for years. Um, he was just so happy and full of it. And um, on the way back, I said, I think he's going to get better. In the hospital, I think he's going to get better. It was a bank holiday and he was home for the long weekend. Later on, he rang me daughter and I said, David's gone missing, I don't know where he is, but I'm worried sick. There's a train stopped on the fire dock, and I've got this awful feeling it's got something to do with David. And she said they would all go out and have a look for him, see if they could find him. And they was out looking for him and came back and said they couldn't find him anywhere. And then I had then rung the hospital and uh, I had rung the police to see if they've heard of anything. So I'm home, just wait, 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 wait. How did you feel at that time? Sick sick to the stomach. Because so I knew that, I knew there was something wrong. I knew that with that train, I just knew that there was something to do with me too. Mr Knight, um, his dad, he could, he only get a day off a week, so that would be the day that we'd choose to go and see. Um, but it was three and a half hours to get there, and three and a half hours to get back, and then we'd visit for an hour. That would be eight hours, so we only had an hour of visiting time. David was saying, um, oh, can you stay longer? Can you stay longer? So I felt so sorry. I sort of didn't want to walk out and leave him. And even when we left then, he said, oh, stay a bit longer, stay a bit longer. I said, we can't, David, because we got that massive journey home. I did say to, to his health, um, to his mental health, I said, couldn't they get a bed down here for them? Like, because if it was not a long distance, maybe I could just pop every day and just see him for an hour. He was so far away and I think he just felt he was on his own. And he actually wanted his family close by him. I don't want anybody to go through what we've been through. Which is so tragic. And such... You feel so empty. He was my son and he was my first boy born. This is stupid, really. We made a cross-up thing, and 
I'd go to his grave and I'd uh, I'd grab that cross really really tight before I leave. And this is silly really, but I grab old like grab old really tight like this. I do. I say I love you, David. Can you hear me? I love you, David, and I'll always love you to the day I die. <laughs>